Hooray, hooray, hooray. We are no longer suspended on Facebook. Welcome back, Facebook. Welcome back. I was, I was all this week here, I was counting down the hours. It was like, you have 16 more hours until you can go live. I'm like, yay. So crazy, so crazy. All right, let's, uh, let's get started with a word of prayer, and uh, we'll see what God has for us this morning. Father, we just come to you in the precious holy name of Jesus again to thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you. I know like the, as my daughter in Oklahoma called me this morning saying that they'll, they canceled their church because their town, their city was hit with five tornadoes. And their church was hit and just really messed up really pretty bad. I saw some pictures of uh, the roof almost gone. But we are able to come here this morning to worship you and honor you. We have the ability. Our, our, everything is intact. It's sunshine. It's beautiful outside right now. But I know life in a moment, because they were asleep when these tornadoes hit, it, and the alarms woke them up and put them all in a shelter. But in a moment, life can change. In a moment, a wreck can happen. In a moment, a heart can stop beating. In a moment, things can just absolutely turn upside down. But in this moment, Father, I just want to honor you and give you praise and glory for you deserve it. You are the God who created everything. You are the God who allows things to happen. You are the God who brings discipline. You are the God who blesses and honors. You're the God who gives and loves. We thank you. For you are a holy, righteous, good Father. We thank you for this opportunity to come and worship you. I ask now that your Holy Spirit would come into this place. May, may it... Uh, Sit in the presence, may be uh, sit beside us and even nudge us as the words that are given today will um, open our eyes to see where we are in our relationship with you. Again, it's not about the religion. It's not about the aspects of always the obedience of it, but it's the aspects of it's a relationship. And that you love us so much. You have done things for us that we can't even imagine, that we didn't even see that, we, that was you that did it for us. I know for myself, I'm here today because you saved my life many times. I should have been eliminated. I should have been unalive many times from a broken neck to car wrecks to being struck by lightning to, to a person trying to unalive me. How many things I should have not, I should not be here right now, but I am. And it's because of you. And so I honor you with that. And I praise your name with that. But I ask right now that for your help. That you would speak the words that need to be spoke today. And hold my tongue where they need to, where it needs to be held. That we point people to you. That you open our eyes and see the truth of where we are personally and as a nation. God, as we coming up on this election day here soon on Tuesday... Our nation is on, it's it's like it's waiting in the balance for the people to decide. Remembering back to when the people decided to not choose you, but choose a king instead. And watched so many things go bad when they chose that king. That is, our nation stands in the same balance as Israel did back then. God, I pray for mercy that the people would stand up and choose godliness Choose leaders that will follow you and put you first. Choose leaders that would say the sanctity of life is important, that we will stop this uh, uh, sacrificing to the god Moloch. God, that we will stop uh, bowing down to the gods that, that, um, that stand for uh, homosexuality. God, that we would uh, just take and get rid of this stuff and bring you back into the place where you belong in this nation. Knowing that already one state has put in, implemented for the schools to put Bibles and prayer back into the school system. God, may that, may that kind of, of honor to you happen in every state of this country. 
that we would come back to a place that things were good when we did that following you. That if we do it again, maybe it will be good again. So Father, help us. Lead us. Guide us. Everyone that means harm to your people, may you just remove them from, from where they are at as leaders. God, we need you. We so desperately need you. So as those that have come here today and those that have joined us online, may you just, Holy Spirit, hold their attention to speak a truth in their lives, to understand maybe something that you have for them today will lead them to a freedom that they need. God, we just love you. We honor you. Glorify your holy name. Help us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Good morning. So our word came to me this morning. I was like, all week I've been, uh, I just keep getting pulled to this one chapter. And then the next thing you know, everything just changed this morning. So the title, what I titled it is called Entitlement. Entitlement. Um, I really got this of understanding as he led me to the story and I read through it and I'm just like, oh, I'm still not understanding what you're wanting to say. But what he was showing me was trying to, to um, uh, make a relevance of the time and, and space that we're in now in our country. The, the word entitlement is in the, uh, in the dictionary. It says the fact of having a right to something. The amount in which a person has a right to. Um, the belief that one is inherited, deserves, or a privilege of special treatment. Right there, when I read that part of the definition, it took me back to my friend, Bernie. Bernie was raised, his dad was the preacher of a church I went to when I was a teenager. And in that, I kind of saw that Bernie got away with a lot of troubles in the church. When certain things happen, you know, that there was something that would go down there and it was the cause of Bernie and me and Frankie, Bernie didn't get in any trouble because he was the pastor's son. So it was like an entitlement that he kind of knew and he played on. That how I see even more in the culture of today's teenagers and young people, that how we do things and then saying an entitlement, well, my dad's this person here, you can't touch me with that one. My dad got money. He can get me out of this trouble. Or my dad or my mom, they do these certain things there. I'm a, you know, I can do whatever I want. And when you go into the schools nowadays and watch how many teachers are quitting because these kids think that they're entitled, that they won't, they won't sit there and do what they're supposed to. And, and you know, it's a really crazy thing. I saw the statistics the other day, and I, kind of, I should have wrote it down, but I didn't write the number down, that how many of the high school students nowadays can't even hardly read? They can't read cursive at all. But they think they're entitled to the job that makes six figures. They're entitled, I'm going to get out of high school and I'm going to go and I'm going to get this four-year degree and I'm going to get this, I'm going to make all this big money. But it's not happening. Life is starting to hit them. And entitlement is trying to say over them and it's like, well, no, I still think I deserve this. This is the culture of America. It's called Pride. Entitlement is tied to the word pride. And the word of God says pride goes before a fall. We know what it means? You think you're all puffed up and you're all that and a bag of chips, you're going to get squished. Like I talked about last time, squished like grape. Miyagi would say, right side road, be good. Left side road, be good. Walk down middle road, squished like grape. Sometimes we walk around this puffed up head. We think that we're all that. We're okay. We deserve all this. That God is saying, look, mm -mm. go ahead and be that way. And I'm going to take my hands of protection off of you. I'm going to let you have your way and watch what happens. We end up in this entitlement because of a spiritual aspect of life. Certain things that God has told us not to do, and on this, I call it the weekend of Halloween. This was the enlightening thing that God was showing me this morning. We hear it all the time when it comes about this season of the end of October, because my birthday is on October 31st, and so I celebrate my birthday instead of 
Halloween. I've done it all my life. But it's still that I still see many, many churches and many, many people that call themselves Christians. They celebrate Halloween. Halloween is the second most favorite holiday Christians celebrate. First is Christmas. Then they like Halloween. Why? Because it's the gift of free candy and you get to dress up and be somebody that you're not. Whether it is a superhero or whatever it is that you want to be, you're dressed up or a Bible character, it doesn't matter. You still pretend to be somebody that you're not. In the Bible, God wrote ground rules and ways to live life so that it would protect you. Why? Because the understanding of man loses um, ignorance, I would say, has ignorance to what happens in a spiritual realm that we do not see or, or want to see. Many of us, like the Baptists and the Methodists and the Lutherans, you know, they want to shut a blind eye to the spiritual realm. So there's certain things in the Bible. That's why we went non-denominational. There's certain things in the Bible they do not want to connect to because they're scared of it. They don't want to have no part of it. But the reality is it's in the book and God tells us about it. To why? To warn us, don't mess with this stuff because it's going to hurt you. It can even unalive you. Let me show you. In Leviticus chapter 20, verse 6, it says this. The person who turns to the spirits of the dead and familiar spirits to commit prostitution by going after them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from the midst of his people. So one of the things that God wanted to set forth to you and saying, listen, Satan deceived a third of the angels he cast them out of heaven. The Bible calls it, he fell like lightning. That was Satan. He fell like, Lucifer fell like lightning out of it. And where did he end up? He ended up here. Ended up as ruler of this space for a time. And then that, the, the fallen angels, they are not angels anymore. Their names now are changed to demons. Okay? And then that, in the demon realm, in the spiritual realm, they have certain powers that are given and allowed to have in this realm. And so in that, they're able to mess with us. God is saying, I don't want you messing with those because what's going to happen is going to bring you harm. And John 10.10, 10, it calls it, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But since you want to be so, in a way, mm, entitled... To think that you know better than me, God, I will myself turn my face against you. That's almost like mom and dad saying, listen, listen, son, daughter, listen. The rules of my house is this, okay? You're 18 years old now. This is, this is what happened to me many, many times. You're 18 years old now, but you're in my house preparing to go off to college or to get a job to be able to get up on your feet and go on your own, Okay? These are still my rules. You still have to follow my rules. Okay? Because this is my house. I pay for it. I do everything. This is the way it goes. If you choose not to do that, then there's the door. Go find somewhere else to live. And I will, I love you. I care about you. But this is the way. And God does the same thing. He does the same thing as he sits right here. He goes, I will turn my face from you. That what you know what means? You lose his favor. You have no longer have God's favor. And in that, sometimes we're going to say, maybe that's what's going on in your life is that you've been disobedient. You entertain spirits from things that you were allowed. You came to Halloween and you celebrated the, the evil. Because I've listened to the several um, um, d uh, documentaries and even some interviews with witches and warlocks that sit back and say, you know what? Christians are so stupid. They're so ignorant. Because you know what? When they celebrate that day, that opens up the door. They're saying, okay, they're writing a consent. They're almost signing this legal document by their actions of saying, I give okay for the demons to come in and mess with me and my family. 
Then after Halloween, all of a sudden all this crap starts happening in their family and they're wondering why bad luck hit me, bad luck hit me, bad luck hit me. This is bad happening to me. This is going on in my life. This is fighting going on there. And they're wondering why. Because why? They went to the harvest thing at the church. They went to the celebration thing at the church. And they all dressed up in their little outfits. And you know what? Because what does God's Word says? It says judgment is coming to the house of God first. And that means you, you went to church, you set up the little thing. No, no, but pastor, we were doing this to reach the lost. No, 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 no. You still open the door of celebration. You allowed things that the, that, that the, the lost people do. It's the same thing as going to the Satan's temple and just doing what they're doing, and then, but you're taking that and taking it to your church. How ignorant or stupid are we? But we think we're entitled because we carry Christ's name on our chest or on our forehead or wherever we want to carry it. We carry our Bible. The church, we think we're all holier than thou. We're entitled. But then we come and we do this stupid thing every Halloween. Year after year after year after year. And we're giving okay to the demonic realm to have access to our churches and to our family, to our children. And we're oblivious to it. And we wonder why our churches have no power, there's no help, and there's always bad things happen one after another. Let me show you another one. God meant serious business about it because he didn't just write it one time. He writes several things about dealing with the spirit realm. Dealing with witches, dealing with soothsayers, dealing with those that palm readers. You know those guys that are on TikTok, you know, let me see how I'll lay down the card and put it like this. You better, well, you see something scroll like that? You better scroll real fast. Because you're going to open the door to demonic attacks to you and your family. Looking and dealing with that stuff. You wonder why maybe some of the stuff is happening to you? Maybe it's your disobedience to a holy God and you opened up a spirit realm and in that there's, you're being attacked by evil spirits. Let me show you. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27. A man or a woman who has in, uh, has in them a spirit of the dead or a, fam a familiar spirit must be put to death. They must pelt them with stones. Their blood guilt is on them. So what God says, I'm serious about this. I'm going to make a law. My people, you're going to say, you're, uh, you're my child. So it's almost like in my house. If you want to be, I mean business. You're going to break my rules, get out of my house. Here, God's in intent about it is, I don't want it nowhere near any of my people. But if I catch you with it, what we're going to do is we're going to drag you outside the city. And we're going to take the stones and we're going to pelt you. What does pelt mean? We're going to hit you with the stones until you're done. And you don't breathe no more. That's how serious God is about some things in life. But we just call it a joke. Oh, but we're under the blood of Jesus. God, we, we've been born by the grace. We have the grace, the grace. When in here have I ever found that when we abuse the grace of God, God says, you know what? You abuse it. I'm done. We do. And acts. When the two, the husband and wife, sells their property and says, you know what, let's keep this portion, but tell them we sold it. It looks like this. You got a house, they got a house. For $250,000, they sold it. But they're going to tell, they're going to tell um, the, the preacher, you know, we only sold it for $200,000, and we're going to take the $50,000, we're going to pocket it, so we can go and buy it, put down on another house, and we can start all over again, but still look good amongst everybody else, because we donated $200,000. And they went into the church, and he stood before the preacher, and he said, he said, here's my money, we sold our house, here's my money, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God, who sees everything, Holy Spirit sees everything, so that's another thing, you think you're entitled, you think that nobody sees you doing what you're doing wrong, but you're, you're lying to yourself. And he says, the Holy Spirit says, you're lying. And in that, because you're lying, these men right here are going to carry you out. And boom, he fell down unalived in the church right there on the spot. On the spot. How many people, if, we, if there was a way to find out how many people within a time they come into the church and lie to the Holy Spirit, then in that next week they were gone. 
if we could see from in the spirit realm of really what happened, that your lies that you're lying to, your, the entitlement you think you have opens the door to the spirit of death. Because that's what's happening here. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 9 through 14 says this. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, you must not learn the abhorrent practices of those those nations. There must never be found among you any one who sacrifices his son or daughters in the fire, anyone who practices divination, an omen reader, a soothsayer, a sorcerer, one who casts spells, one who conjures up spirits, a practitioner of the cult, or a necromance, whoever does these things is abhorred to the Lord. And because of these destabled, detestable, I'm sorry, detestable things, the Lord your God is able to drive them out from before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Those nations that you are about to dispose, disposes, uh, about to dispose this list to omen readers and diviners, but the Lord your God has not given you permission to do such things. So what it is God is saying, this is what it is. You're going to go into an area and you're going to be able to occupy it. Maybe you get a new job. Hmm? Maybe you get to move in with somebody. Maybe you get to get married and move, or, or, or introduce to somebody who's going to do life with you. Or you're going to go to a new church. If they entertain any of these things on this list, get out. How many churches that are in this area that they call themselves Christian churches, but they 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 hold these little public, I mean, these little private little get-togethers, and they are all really, what they're doing is they're worshiping the devil. And you don't even know it, and you're going to this church. Masons, they call themselves. They call them Freemasons. When you do the research of them, they're nothing but devil worshipers. That's all they are. And you're going and mixing with yourself with them. And now you're allowing those spirits to come after you. And you're wondering why. Wondering why things are continually happening in your life. Because you opened the door. You gave legal rights by saying okay to this. That's why I say for, for voting this year. Your silence of your voting. Listen again, I... I um, I didn't preach it in last week, but I, I had a, a word for Tuesday morning, and I put it on my Facebook, my personal Facebook. And then it was, uh, um, it, it was that it started off with, it was because I was watching The Karate Kid, and it really just stood out to me you know, what um, Miyagi was telling Danielson about his apathy about doing things. Apathy means his lack of energy, his caring, his lack of caring about doing something. He's like, no, either you're in or you're out. You either walk on this side, the right side of the road, or you walk on the left side of the road. And then in scriptures, Jesus kind of confirms it when he writes a letter to the church. He says, I'd rather you be hot or cold against him. But if you're in the lukewarm, he is going to spit you out, which is going to be more painful if he does it. And as Miyagi goes like this, but if you walk down the center of the road, eventually, sooner or later, you're going to get squished like a grape. That means sooner or later, you keep playing both sides of the road. Christian, sinner, Christian, sinner. Go to church. Go do your thing. Do your, you listen to your music that you listen to that's so ungodly and you just think it's all right because everybody else is listening to it. You, you go to this, this, you know, this site on your phone that you keep going to to look at stuff and lust or covet or whatever you want to do. And, and then that you think you're okay because why do you think you're entitled? Grandma was a Christian, she's going to heaven. Mom is going to, she's a Christian, she's going to heaven. My dad's a Christian, he's going to heaven. I'm going to go to heaven too because I'm, I'm, I'm raised as a Christian. I'm, I'm good. Like my, my, my friend, 
the pastor's son. He thought he was good because he's the preacher's son. Your daddy's not going to be able to stand and, and, and say, Judge, it's my boy. I'm going to cover him, you know, have mercy on him. Heck no. A good judge is going to say, no, you broke the rules. Here's the consequences that I, I, I have from the least to the greatest of the consequences that I can give as a judge. When you go to court, you'll find out. If you break the speed limit and you go in there and you take a lawyer with you, he's going to say, judge, you know, we just want to plead for the court. You know, you'll bring this speeding ticket down a little bit, you know, and, and, and that way the payment of the consequences won't be so much. But what happened? You still got to pay the consequences. There's nobody there to say, judge, I'll pay for it all. Just let him go free. I'll take care of it all. I'll take the punishment. There's nobody going to do that for you. Nobody's going to do that for you. You think you're all that to do? Somebody's going to do that for you? It ain't going to happen. But it does happen for salvation and king to, to God Almighty. That when you're judged before him for your sins, Jesus can come in if you will accept his payment, which is his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. But it can't happen until you accept it. Entitlement. You think you're entitled. You see, there was this one guy in, in, in the story here. His name is Saul. See, just like America, Israel, uh, I mean, just like Israel, America um, thinks that we want things to go our way, except, you know, to have things this, this certain way, and everything's going to be okay. Israel, at one time, they said, you know what, God, you're tough to deal with. We just want a king to be like everybody else. And America is becoming the same way. It's be saying, we want to be like everybody else. We want to be like Russia. We want to be like China. We want to be like all these other countries over there in, in Italy and things like that. We want to be like the United Kingdom. We just want one governor that will rule for us forever and ever, whatever it is, until they pass away. And then we get a new one to take over us. And we're going to be all okay. I don't mean to disrespect you, but you're stupid if you want that. What we have right now with the Constitution of the United States has every right for you to be a free nation, a free country, to do certain things that you can't do in other countries. So what? We disagree. That's where the Constitution comes in. It gives you the right to say your piece, and I get to say my piece. If there's no compromise, then you just go to your part of the, the over there and do whatever, unless you don't break the unless you break the law. So Israel decides they want a king. They got him a king. God says, "Okay, I'm taking my hands off of him. Give him the king." And you know what happens when you get when you turn away from God? You get whatever you get. So the king starts off great. King Saul starts off, you know, he's doing all the changes. The people are going to love me. I'm going to do all these things for the people to love me. You know, you got people like that where you work, at your school. They purposely do things to get people to like them. But the true colors eventually find to come out. Well, at one moment, King, uh, uh, king Saul was told to, listen, you're going to go up against the Amalekites. Listen, I want you. God told the man of God and gave him a message, okay? said, Samuel, go tell King Saul, we're going to go to battle. I'll be with them. I will give them power and the understanding how to defeat the enemies of Israel. But you got to be obedient and do everything I say. What I'm saying is everything. Eliminate everything. Everybody. And Saul went in there and they won the battle, but he didn't obey. He kept all the good goats and cows and sheep, and he kept the king alive. And then out of nowhere, the man of God shows up, has a conversation with the king, and next thing you know, he hears this, meh, 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 meh. And the man of God's going, what is that I hear? I hear sheep and goats and stuff and, and Saul's like well man we, we we just kept him to give sacrifices to God for for the victory and he said did not God tell you to kill them all to take them all down 
Did not God tell you to do that? Well, yeah, 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 he did, but, but you know, I just, I thought it would be better to do like that. You know what, sometimes your thinking of the way you think should, things should go and what God is telling you to do is going to cause you more tr- troubles than good. Because later on, at that point, God says, you know what, because of this disobedience, I'm done with you. And God leaves, the favor of God leaves Saul. And the whole Israel. Why? Because as the king goes, thou go the nation. America, understand this. As the president goes, there goes America. We are on the precedence come Tuesday with a final vote. Many of us have been able to go ahead and vote, early vote. Many of you are still deciding, should I go vote? I don't want to vote. This is so stupid. I don't like neither one of them. He's got a loud mouth and orange hair. I don't like that hair color. She, she's just a dummy. She just laughs about everything. She knows, like, whatever. You know? And so in there, your indecisiveness is going to cost you. Listen, your silence is consent. If this person, this woman gets into, listen to me, If she gets voted into presidency, we are okay now with witchcraft being over us. And in that, thus thus go America. No, but Donald Trump, listen to this. No, maybe you need to do a little bit more research on Donald Trump. He is not a perfect man. He's not a preacher. He's a businessman. And what America needs is somebody to make business decisions, financial decisions, to get this country straight. I know businessmen, and businessmen are not sometimes nice to deal with. They will look at you as a number and fire you in a heartbeat. That's a leader. That is what this country needs as a leader. But in this leadership, he stands more for the values of this book as do the whole Republican Party, stands more for the value of this book, marriage between a man and a woman. That's in this book. The book says that a man and a man and a woman and a woman is an abomination. It's abhorred. Abhorred. God hates it. He says it. Then, he is also, the Republican Party as, as well, as is Donald Trump, is for total stopping abortion completely. Which is also in this book. It says if you shed innocent blood. And as we saw here earlier. He, even in the witchcraft. of If you give your children over to the fire. You're, you're, what you're doing is you're worshiping another God. And you're sacrificing your children. That is what abortion is. It's sacrificing your child for your God yourself. It was like you know well. You know, but listen. Understanding. All of this can be forgiven. All of this can be washed away with the blood of the Lamb. It's the continual lifestyle of living it and living it and living it as where the, 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 the problem comes. Because let me show you. In, in 1 Samuel 28. I was going to read the whole thing, but I'm not. I feel the time is, uh, is, is kind of sensitive right now. But in 1 Samuel chapter 28, the Philistines are coming to go to war against Israel. Why? Because Israel, the leader of Israel is sinning against God. And God is saying, you know what? My hands are off of him and your enemies will come. Think about that. When the nation turns away from God, it opens the borders for the enemies to come. America, do you hear me? When your leader turns away from God, it opens the borders to the enemies of God. Saul saw that, look, it looks like we have no hope. There's so many of them. We're not going to win this battle. I need direction from God. So he starts praying and asking God. 
Why is it that we got to wait till the bad happens before we start calling on God for help? But for, Paul, uh, for Saul's sake, God already made his choice. He said, I told you, I left you, and I'm not messing with you. As he was trying to call out on God, he saw God was not answering them, but he went to go see about the man of God, but the man of God already passed on and went on to glory. So he's like, so how can I find out an answer what I'm supposed to do? He goes and sees a soothsayer, a one that can speak to the dead and to get information on what to do. This choice now goes back to the laws. When he first became king, he kicked out of the country everyone that was known as a soothsayer or one that can, uh, 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 what do you call it, a medium that can talk to the dead and give you information. He kicked them all out of the country. But in that, he secretly dresses up, and we read the scripture, he dresses up and he goes off and he finds this woman who, who is known to be one that can talk to the dead, and he comes in there and he tricks the woman. Because he passed the law saying, he passed the law. He passed the law that God already implemented. He passed it in saying, if anybody's caught, that woman or that person and the soothsayer are going to be put to death. So he's dressed up, he finds this person, he comes in there and he's trying to wheel and deal with this person saying, no, you, I need to know, I need to know. He goes, no, but Saul passed the law. If, you, if I do this, you, I'm going to get, I'm gonna, they're going to unalive me. And he's like, no, that's not going to happen. I can promise you, I can promise you. And next thing you know, she finds out that he's King Saul. Now she's really sweating it. And he's saying, I promise you, on my authority as king, I will not have you executed for telling me what I need to know. And I need you to go to the spirit realm to find it. He says, all right, tell me what you want to do. I need you to find Samuel. And I need you to ask him what I should do. To ask him to ask God what I should do in this. Because if we go against the Philistines, we're going to, we're going to lose. And I need a way to win. So she gets a hold of Samuel. Samuel comes. She has a conversation with Samuel. Samuel says, Ain't happening. In fact, Samuel is so honest and he says, tell him that tomorrow him and his sons are going to be done. Their lives are done. Tomorrow. Do you see now he went from disobeying God to now he is not knowingly, he's breaking the law he implemented. He also broke the law of God. And in doing all of that, God is going to honor his word. And his, him and his son are now going to be unalive the next day. It ain't going to be like that everybody should drag him out in the street and throw stones at him. God's doing it himself. You want to continue to play with spiritual things that you're playing in that's demonic. Music, cards, Ouija boards, stuff, videos, just watching videos of demonic stuff. You are opening the door to spiritual attacks physically, mentally, and spiritually you are hurting yourself and your family. And as you read into the story, the next day they go to war. And Saul. And his son. Both perish in the battle. Many of you are believers. And many of you are, are, are right now. You're messing with spiritual things. You are dealing with soothsayers. You're going and listening to things. You, some of them are, you, you may unintentionally may be thinking that you're going to a church service and there's a man of God who can prophesy and who can look at you and tell you your future and maybe bless you with a good news or a good word from God for your future. But really, the man of God is a Satan worshiper and he's has, he has special touches to um, uh, uh, words from familiar spirits. Understanding some of you have spirits that follow you everywhere you go and taking down every notes and they know everything about you. And so when it comes time to mess with your head, 
They'll use a person who think they, they call themselves a prophet, they call themselves a prophetess, but in reality, they're just a, nothing but a soothsayer or a medium. And they're just dealing with unclean spirits, demons. You need to be careful in these last days. As much as I know the Spirit of God speaks to me, I'm careful. I'm careful about how I say it and what I say. I feel, no, on some, sometimes I feel the Spirit of God when I go to start, I, I want to say it, I want to say it, but I feel this like, don't, hush your mouth, hush your mouth, don't say it. And then sometimes I feel it to, to be released. I know in 2023, I believe it was in June, I was about right here, and I got this word, and it's misconstrued, you can go see it on my TikTok, I, I got it pinned on my TikTok, and it was something that God gave me, and it was so heavy, and I had to release it, but it hasn't happened yet, but it was said that something is going to happen, there's going to be an event that we'll be able to see and know. And then when that event happens, go home, anoint the doors on your your, your house, plead the blood over your house, and go into your house and stay there for three days. That's all it was said. Man, so much stuff in the comments is going on. There's a three days of darkness. They've been prophesying about that. I, my word was never anything about no three days of darkness. But in seeking God lately about that prophecy, this is what God told me. It is a three days of darkness because whatever is going to happen in this attack it is going to be like a, a world event that is a, like a release of demons. That power is given to the demons to torment people. But you're going to be able to see something happening in the sky. The dark day doesn't mean it could be sunny or cloudy out and the light's still out there. The darkness is the evil, the release of the evil. That's the darkness. It's not like the sun's going to go away for three days. No, it's not that. The darkness is a release that the evil is allowed to do what it can do. Why? Because the scripture goes back into... In, in, uh, um, I want to say it's in... in, in uh, Paul writes it. It's about a church... And dealing with discipline in the church. There, there, here's how it goes, okay? So here's an example of what God's going to do, but in this example right here. You have a church, okay? And in the church, the man's sitting over here with his girlfriend. But over here, his wife sits right there. They go to the same church. This is a demonstration of uh, an appearance of sin. The Bible says to abstain. Stay away from the appearance of sin. So in that... The pastor is to go to the man and pull him aside and say, listen, man, either you got to go, go repent and get off of her and, and, and get back with your wife and work things out, or you need to not come here at all. What you're doing is the appearance that you're having an adulterous affair. That's adultery is that you're married and having sex with somebody else. That's adultery. Your appearance of sin, and in that, you need to stop it. Well, the man comes back the next day and brings the girl with him again. They sit in the same spot. And the wife comes in and sits. Now the man of God is going to go to the deacon board, okay, the leadership board, and then they're going to schedule a meeting with the man. And they're say, listen, we're warning you. You need to stop this sin or else. And then the next Sunday, he comes back again. And then that, the, man, the, the pastor, according to the scriptures of how things are to be done, Okay, in front of everybody, he's to call the man out in front of everybody and his sin and his appearance of sin and tell him to get out of the church. Kick him out. That's what the, that's what the Bible says to do. And what you're to do is you're to release him to the devil to have his way with it and that the devil will hurt, steal, kill, and destroy him maybe to the point of life, that his life is almost over, that he will repent of his sin. Listen, Jesus is so serious about this. He talks about it and says, listen, I would rather you cut off your hand or pluck out your eye so you could go to heaven. The sin is that serious. I need you to be able to come to heaven. Where this place is not meant for you is called hell. It's still your choice of what you're going to do. You're choosing to rebel against a holy God who said, I made a way to fix things for you and me. 
but you're choosing not to, and then next thing you know, the consequences come. You're like, no. Do you know how long it was that God left Saul and then Saul passed away? 20 years. Some of you think you're okay because no consequences have, have come right away. God's mercy and allow you a, a time for you to repent for some of you it's going to be very short. But for some of you it's going to be a while. But eventually the consequences will come. Mark my word. It's right here. It happens over and over and over and over again. God's word does not lie. You think you're entitled. You think you go to church. You think you're related to somebody that puts you with status. You think you're entitled. You, you think you're entitled. You think you can get away with all this. You think you're entitled. You're going to be okay. Saul never thought that day he was going to get a word because he was trying to look for God in a bad way. Many of you are looking for God in all the wrong places. You're looking for God in the wrong church. You're looking for God in the wrong man or woman that you're trying to date. You're, you're looking for wrong, God in the wrong friends that you're hanging out with. You're looking for God in all the wrong ways. And God is saying, you know what? I'm going to step away. And I'll wait for you to change your mind and come back to me. And the right way. And the right way is. Repent. Turn from your sin, make Jesus Lord, King of your life, and follow Him. As He teaches you, you obey. When you disobey, expect to get a spanking and then get right back in the game. Get right back into life of following Him. Judgment is coming to the house of God, then judgment is coming to the sinners. And in this, we're on the crest of, of, of a change. The focus on the Gentiles, which is us, is now going to shift to Israel. Because when I read in the Bible, everybody in the world is against Israel. It doesn't specify anything about America being beside Israel, being their buddy and their guy that we're going to fight with you, buddy. No, it's Israel by themselves. Why? Because it's going to put the pressure on them to turn and say, God, help us. And repent, for them to repent. And realize Jesus is the only way. Their killing of the, their, their building of the, the temple and the sacrificing the animals is not going to work. It's realizing that Jesus paid the final sacrifice debt that was needed. And when they see that, Israel will be saved. And Jesus will come back and reign for a thousand years. But today, as I close, witchcraft is going to get more intense. The spirit realm itself Demonic attacks is going to get more intense. You're going to see more craziness than ever before. Because why? People are outward opening. Just like back in the days, these guys had openly built temples to sacrifice their children on. They built temples. We're going to start seeing that. As much as I don't want to say that, as much as I don't want to see it, but it's going to happen. We're going to think what happened to our world I'm telling you, the demonic oppression upon the leadership of this world, they're all going to say it's okay to do this. And many of you are probably like, you're crazy, Pastor, you're crazy. Well, just mark it down in your little book. If you're still alive in about five to ten years and God hasn't come back yet, you're going to see all this stuff happen. You're going to see it. You're going to see it in Europe first. You're going to see them building the temples, worshiping in the gods, and then you're going to see them sacrificing people, children. And the open. Now they do it in secret, hiding. Watch. 
What is our hope? What is that we learn from all this? First, I ask you the question, do you think you're entitled? Of course you're going to say, no, I'm not entitled. I'm, 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 I'm a good person. Are you really? Then why do you continually live a life, a lie? You live a lie. You say you're a Christian, but you live like all the rest of your friends that never go to church and never utter the name of Jesus out of their mouth. You never utter the word of Jesus out of your mouth, ever. And anytime you can go do something with them in a sinful manner, you're in. If you can get away with it. If your parents will let you. Entitlement. You are not entitled. Understand that. And eventually, eventually, sooner or later... You're going to get caught. You're going to have to pay the price. Just like Saul. I don't want that for you. I want the day down to come to say, you know what? I'm tired of this kind of a battle. I can't do this anymore. I need help. Your help comes from Jesus. Repent of your sins. For the kingdom is here now. The opportunity is now. Repent of your sins. He loves you so much. He cares about you so much. And this is the only time, as you, you don't know, in the next moment, it might be done. Still remembering on the day of 9-11, just being up on a roof, and in a moment, a plane was crashing into a building. Then another plane. Then another plane. Did we learn anything from that? In 2020, in a moment, the whole nation was on a lockdown. Did we learn anything from that? We go back to the same old ways of sin. Just like Saul. Just like Saul. How can we stop it? Repent. Put God first. Put God first. Put Jesus first in your life. Turn away from that life. And make Him Lord. As we close, will you choose Jesus today? He is your only hope if you remember this anywhere in your life remember this he is not too far away for you to call out to him for help before your last breath he is hope father we come to you in the precious holy name of jesus again to thank you for this opportunity to preach your word again thank you for truth that you don't play around with sin eventually the consequences will come the punishment will come for the sin. But you made a way. We thank you for the way, your son, Jesus. To pay that sin debt and to walk away from it all. That when it comes time to seeing you face to face and being judged, that it will be remembered no more because we are covered by the blood of Jesus. And Father, when that day comes, those three days of troubles come, as we sit in our house, that may you hear the cries of many, many, many people that are lost or even have been born again at one time and walked away, that you would receive their, their cry of repentance and their true heart of saying, forgive us of our sins. We believe and trust in you as our Lord and Savior. That that will open the doors for salvation, open the doors for eternal life that our names would be written in that Lamb's book of life. So God, I pray for mercy upon our country as we come up on this date on Tuesday, the final votes go in and tally up, that God, you would bring in a people that see your regards as the way to live, that we stand by Israel, that we stand on marriage between a man and a woman, you did not make Adam and Steve, you made Adam and Eve. That we will walk with that. And that we will stand on the sanctity of life. At conception, you give life. Because your word says, God, you said you knew us before we were in our mother's womb. And in that, that means we were somebody. You knew us. 
before we were created. That is life at conception. That is life at conception. That is life at conception. So we honor you, God. But we ask for your help. That you will stop any kind of shenanigans that will try to prevent it. This election from going off and being right and fair. God, we pray for any other kind of shenanigans that any other country would try to start even a, a, a destruction, a war, or anything against us. God, I pray that you would be our protector as you are Israel's protector. God, we pray your blessing upon Israel that you'll open the leader's eyes to see the truth that Jesus is the way. God, if that is the problem that the leadership is not, then I pray you'll shift leaders. Get the wrong leaders out and bring godly leaders in that know that you have made and paid the debt through Jesus Christ. We pray your blessing be upon Israel. Protect them. Protect them from so many that want them destroyed. Father, protect them. God, we give you all the praise and honor and glory. God, you hear the prayer of your people as they come to seek you. And those that are now dealing with, they, they did not know they opened doors of witchcraft. They opened doors to demonic uh, oppression or demonic attacks. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you'll send angels now to guard them now and protect them. I speak to you spirits now and, and all those that are listening. You have no right to them no longer. We plead the blood on every one of these people now that are here and watching online. We plead the blood of Jesus. Now you have no right, no legal right to them now no longer. You have to leave. Leave them now in the mighty name of Jesus or pay the consequences. Back to the pit, you will have to go. So leave them alone right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare, people of God, be free from this torment. God, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us and teaching us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You are dismissed.